As you know, God in his holy day plan, he has the holy days, his festivals, that he has all throughout the year. We start off with Passover, first day of unleavened bread, which that whole feast is seven days long, and then the seventh day is another holy convocation. Then we have Pentecost, after the wave sheaf offering, 50 days later. Then Feast of Trumpets, when Christ will return. Boy, do we look forward to that day. And then we have Day of Atonement, where Satan's locked up for a thousand years. Also, another thing we look very much forward to. And then the Feast of Tabernacles, which we just kept seven days long. And then after that, the eighth day. We all just came back not too long ago from keeping the feast. Some of us, of course, had to keep it at home, like Jennifer and myself, and a few others. But uh, during that Feast of Tabernacles, there was a message that someone was doing, and they brought out a very specific verse that really, wow, I opened, opened my eyes and uh, read through it. All of us have read through this verse of scripture, and uh, if you will, you can start turning your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 14, might be uh, familiar sounding, that's, uh, that's the chapter that happens to have Satan, his uh, downfall from when he fell from heaven, because pride got to the better hand of him. So if you will, start turning to Isaiah chapter 14, and verse 12. And uh, this verse here, was uh, there's a verse here that we're going to cover that really was alluded, uh, some enlightenment. So uh, let's read, start in verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, or the Hebrew word Hal Halel, or Halel, might may have been his original name, we... Uh, we just don't know. But uh, anyway, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. And yes, he, yes he, he has, and he still is. For you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, the angels of God. I want to be higher than all of them. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. So we've, we've read through that many times. There's a specific word though. The latter half of uh, verse 13. I'm going to read this part again. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. Guess what word that is? In Hebrew, that word there that they use to translate to congregation. I'm glad uh, Mr. Johnny Lambert's here today, actually, because uh, that's one of his uh, favorite words, probably. And that is the word moed, or moed. And in case you need a refresher, when Mr. Lambert uh, gave us that Bible study material, if you're watching later and are interested and don't have a copy, I'm sure we can get you one. Just a little refresher on uh, that definition from the Vines Expository. So uh, the word moed or moed refers to an appointed place of meeting. And the fixed Meaning is uh, it's in relation to the context of Israel's religion. The first festivals came to be known as the appointed times, or the set feasts. That's what we just kept, right? One of the, the two feast uh, feasts that we just kept: the Feast of Tabernacles and the Eighth Day. And these festivals are clearly prescribed in the Pentateuch. The word refers to any festival or pilgrimage festival. And again, pilgrimage festival. 
strongly, especially, alludes toward uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. And of course, you find all those holy days in Leviticus chapter 23. Every single one is mentioned. So, Moed, Moed, strongly points towards those appointed times, those feasts. So now, taking that into consideration, let's reread that verse where Satan says, I will also sit on the mount of the Moeds. The Moeds. Satan has done this in this world. He has accomplished his own counterfeit Moeds. And that's the title, by the way. Counterfeit Moeds. Satan wanted to be the center of attention with all the Holy Day festivals. Passover, Days of Unleavened Bread, Pentecost, Trumpets, Day of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacles, and the Eighth Day. There's eight of them. He wanted to be the center of attention of each one. And when he wasn't able to, and God cast him down, Satan, through his influence, and uh, dark scheming mind set out his own religion in the world and you can find that at, at the beginning of the Tower of Babel one of the ver very first counterfeit religions that was probably it, actually it's even before that it, this goes back probably before even the flood but that's a prime example though of when it started after the flood, the Tower of Babel he started sowing in his, uh, his own religion, his own holidays, into the world. And it just so happens to be quite a, uh, I guess you could say coincidence, that uh, of the pagan days, if you Google it, they call this thing the, the wheel of the year, they have eight major pagan holidays, eight of them. God. He has eight festivals, eight major holy days. I think Satan was trying to copy him. And those, those uh, holidays are one we just saw the world observe last week, and that was uh, Say When, which is Halloween. That is mod now Say When is the, or Halloween is the modern day Say When. Yule which is going to be the next one coming up. Christmas. Imbolc, if I'm even pronouncing it right, which is Groundhog Day. And uh, Candle Mass is held uh, by uh, the Catholic Church, actually, on this very same day. Next one. Ostara, the spring equinox. Also called today Easter. Beltane, May Eve, which also is another day, I guess some people celebrate it, I'm actually unfamiliar with it, but uh, it's also known as May Day. And notice the title though, Beltane, yes, the name of the pagan god Bel is mentioned in that holiday, and Bel mentioned in, is mentioned in the scripture as also being Baal, one of the pagan gods that pagans sacrificed their children to through fire, which God doesn't really like. And that's a very good reason, too, because uh, it's pretty sadistic and evil. Next one, Litha, which is uh, the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. A lot of uh, pagans are, this is another big day to them. Not really... Again, kind of like the last one I just mentioned, not so much seen in this part of the world as being celebrated. Possibly in other parts, though, over in Europe. Another one is, uh, I probably dare not even try to pronounce this, but I'll just give the spelling. It's spelled L-U-G-H-N-A-S-A-D-H. Lugnesada. 
I don't know. I don't speak Gaelic or whatever <laughs> really or whatever language that is. But uh, the Roman Catholics actually uh, have a day celebrated on this very same day called La Mas or Loaf Mass. Again, same pagan day. They Christianized it, synchronized paganism into one of their days. We hear that God doesn't like that. And uh, this last one, I was uh, blown away by this. It's called uh, Maybon. Also, the autumn equinox. This pagan holiday also has another name for it called the Feast of Ingathering. Yeah, they stole the name of the Feast of Tabernacles from God. Because the Feast of Ingathering, you could find in Exodus chapter 23, verse 16. And you can just write these two verses down. And also Exodus 34, 22, it says the Feast of Ingathering. That's in retrospect a relation to the Feast of Tabernacles. They're the same thing. So they stole one of the names of God's holy days and threw it on one of their pagan or festivals, Mabon. That one uh, really blew me away. Also very bold of Satan to do. I'm sure God's going to give him a good uh, smack later in uh, when his time comes just for that one and all the other things that he's uh, done. But it truly is remarkable though and sad that many Christian churches out there have adopted Satan's pagan holidays, his counterfeit moeds. And they have abandoned God's moeds. They've set them aside. Half of them don't even know what they are. Probably more than that. You say, especially uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread. How many people will be like, what? What was that? You know, Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's in the Bible. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it actually is. <laughs> they're, they, they don't know it's there. It's remarkable and sad, and it shows you how powerful the enemy is. And uh, he's thrown out these counterfeit moeds to the world. We got to remember what the true moeds are God's moeds Passover, Days of Unleavened Bread, Pentecost, Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement. Feast of Tabernacles and the Eighth Day. Those are the true Moeds, the true feasts of the eternal God. Let us never forget those days and not be deceived by Satan's counterfeit Moeds.